The Norda 001, a trail shoe from a Montreal-based boutique brand that set out to build a running shoe that can last forever, and they kind of achieved that. As I said in the intro, Norda set out to build a shoe that can last forever. Now, does it last forever? Probably not, but the mission of the company is sustainability, and they're approaching that in two ways. One, they're trying to make a very, very durable product that will last considerably longer than a mass-produced alternative, and they are using bio-based materials where they can. So they're trying to balance those, those two things. And additionally, from a model standpoint, they're not looking at seasons or, or changing the models every year. Instead, they're looking at building the best shoe that will last forever. And with the 001, I think they've really achieved that. This shoe was first released in August of 2021, and it really fundamentally hasn't changed. And in fact, I think this colorway, which I bought in 2023, was the launch colorway. So again, they built a shoe that they haven't needed to update because this thing is so durable. Now in the trail and ultra communities, people have put thousands of kilometers into this shoe. And that speaks a lot to the durability and the build quality of this product. Now I have a little bit over a hundred kilometers in this shoe of running and hiking. And there's stories of people saying that, you know, after 300 kilometers, this shoe really comes into its own or after 500 kilometers. And that speaks to how consistent this shoe is over longer periods. This is a trail shoe that's built for durability, but this is also a trail shoe that's built for all day comfort. This is a shoe that you can put on in the morning, go off into the mountains, whether you're running, doing an ultra, racing, hiking, whatever it is, and you come back at night and you just sort of forgot you had this shoe on. That's the level of comfort, that's the level of durability, and that's the level of performance that Nord is trying to build into this shoe. So what do we actually have here from a spec standpoint? Well, according to Norda, the midsole foam is 26 mils in the heel, 21 mil in the forefoot. But this is a trail shoe, so you have five mil lugs. Additionally, you have a beaded TPU insole in the shoe, which adds a few more mil of stack height. So overall stack height in the shoe is 34 mil in the heel, 29 mil in the forefoot, giving you a five mil drop overall puts it in the somewhat well cushioned for a trail shoe zone. Now, my size, which is a size nine and a half US men's, now Norda's shoes run small. What Norda recommends is to size a half size up from your normal size. So I'm normally a size nine US men's. In this, it's a 9.5. So I went half a size up. From a fit standpoint, it's perfect. It fits the way it should. In my size nine and a half US men's, this shoe weighs 288 grams or 10.2 ounces, which puts it right, you know, in that zone of comparable trail shoes for a shoe that is this much cushion and meant for this level of durability. Honestly, on foot, this shoe does not feel heavy whatsoever. Let's start with the upper. And the upper is really one of the things that is quite special about this shoe and very unique about this shoe. It is a one piece laser cut Dyneema upper. So this whole gray area that you see in this upper is one piece. It's cut flat, it's folded around the last, and it's bonded together. There is a sock liner in the shoe. It's a four foot sock liner. It really starts from about here and moves forward. So the sock liner is the gusset for the tongue. So this tongue is attached to the sock liner in the front of the shoe. It's a neoprene like material, but it really just sort of wraps around your foot and gives this uh, upper a softer feeling inside because there's really no padding anywhere in this upper including the heel and the heel counter and the ankle collar are two of the real criticisms of the zero zero one there's there's no padding back here at all there's a suede like material and also you can see it on the the heel pull here um, but there's otherwise there's no padding back here there are two thin foam strips back here similar to the system adidas uses on their adi zero shoes where there's you know they they hold the side of the ankle down but there's nothing actually on the achilles now some people have had issues with this heel design 
I have a fairly high volume foot with a well-developed arch that is neither narrow or wide. I have had absolutely no problem with this, this heel. I've never really felt it. I've never really thought about it. I don't get any heel lift in that. Part of that is because the lockdown in the shoe is so good, the sock liner that I mentioned in the forefoot actually does hold your foot down. And what this gives you on trail is a shoe that really uh, feels like it's wrapped around your foot in the front of your foot. And it it's hard to describe because it's, it's unlike anything I've, I've ever felt in a road shoe. And I've not felt any other trail shoes that have this feeling. But this shoe runs very much in the forefoot. It feels like the mechanical lockdown of the shoe is all up here and your heel is, is sort of structured. It's, it's protected, it's anchored down, but it's also a little bit more flexible back here because there is not a lot of uh, structured heel counter back here. So it's, it's a unique fit that everyone doesn't necessarily benefit from. But again, for me with a high volume foot, it's been very good. I've not noticed any problems back here or had any issue with this design. But that heel design, the ankle collar design, that has been a criticism of this shoe since it was first released. And since uh, 2021, when this shoe first came out, Norda has released the 002 model, which is essentially the same outsole, similar midsole, a little less stack height, but it's got a more conventional upper with a padded heel uh, counter, a little bit more stout heel counter, a padded heel collar, and a much more traditional fit. So I think they developed that shoe really to answer the criticism of this shoe. But I will say that I've not had any issues with fit of this shoe. And I find the way the fit is designed and the way it wraps around the forefoot and puts a lot of emphasis on locking down in the front of your foot and making the front of your foot very comfortable, quite nice, but quite unique. So it could take some getting used to. Another unique feature or property of this shoe is really the midsole and the outsole. So both the midsole, the foam, and the outsole are Vibram. Now, I believe this is the only shoe that uses a Vibram midsole, and what this foam is called is Vibram SLE, which from what I understand is a compression molded EVA foam, and it's bonded to a Vibram Mega Grip light base outsole, which is really the, the standard in trail running for grip and durability. And I've been quite impressed with how durable this outsole is because there is a lot of lugs on this. And there's even these sort of micro spikes uh, across the midsole, which when I first saw this shoe, I thought those would be gone within one or two runs because I run on a lot of hard packed dirt, a lot of rock, a lot of rock scrambles. And I do have some road walking, running, hiking to get to the trails occasionally. I thought they'd be gone instantly, but these little spikes are still here. And the wear on this outsole has been very, very minimal, which I've been very impressed with. But the combination of a Vibram midsole with a Vibram outsole allows for some interesting efficiencies. So Vibram is very well known for the material science. And I think the way the outsole on this shoe is bonded to the midsole probably uses a very minimal glue, very light glue. So you're getting a lot of natural flex into the shoe. There is no rock plate in this shoe. Um, the protection is really coming from the Vibram Mega Grip Light Base and the amount of foam in the shoe, which again is somewhere closer to the max side, at least in the trail world. Though this shoe does not run necessarily like a max stack trail shoe. But the foam in this midsole is extremely consistent. Like I said, I have about 100 kilometers into this shoe right now. And after the first 10 or 15 kilometers, when the midsole sort of just softened up and began to flex a little bit more for me, a little bit more naturally, um, this sh this foam has been extremely consistent. I've noticed no difference in how the shoe felt at kilometer 15 to kilometer 100. And again, as I said in the upfront of this video, people have been putting thousands of kilometers into the shoe. And in the ultra community, a lot of people say this, this foam really comes into its own around 300K. I'm nowhere near 300K in that. So if this foam is that consistent across that range, 
I would say that is is really well done as far as this sustainability angle that Nord is trying to do. They're trying to make a shoe that will last much longer than your standard mass-produced shoe. And so far, my experience with this is that it's doing exactly that. Now, moving to the outsole of this shoe, this is one of the things that I think really sets this shoe apart as well, is the Vibram Mega Grip Light Base. Now, Vibram Mega Grip Light Base is not unique to this shoe. It, it kind of is the standard for grip in trail running right now. It's one of those outsole materials that you instantly understand how much mechanical grip you have on really any surface. This performs extremely well in everything I've run it on, which is dry, rock, mud, asphalt, sand, volcanic ash, because here in Taiwan we have that, uh, roots, leaves, pine needles, everything. This outsole material is quite special as far as grip. And I have this on a few other shoes. This one's no different. Now the outsole pattern on this shoe is quite aggressive. It has five mil lugs, plus these micro spikes that you can see across the outsole probably add a couple more mils on top of that. And then there's a secondary lug pattern below the main lugs, which is a, a visualization or a topo visualization of the Canadian Shield. Now, one problem with this outsole that I've run into, and I think it's kind of unique to me here in Taiwan, is that if you run in a place with a lot of cakey mud, and now here in Taiwan, because I'm running on a lot of limestone and sand with volcanic ash, if it's a little wet, not like it just rained, but it rained maybe last night and I'm running in the morning and you just have damp ground, that mud turns into just a cake and it sticks to this. And because of this secondary lug pattern, the, the topo shield, Canadian shield sort of secondary lug pattern of this, this uh, lug pattern will fill with that cakey mud quite quickly. And it's hard to clear it because of this secondary lug pattern. Now, it's never caused me a problem. I've never suffered from grip, but it's something to keep in mind if you run primarily in very sticky, muddy conditions. Thinking about the Northeast, where I'm from, where I grew up, I can think of some clay type, clay based muds that would definitely stick to this as well. But again, I've had no overall grip problems with this at all, even when these lugs are filled, which you can see from this B roll. Now, this brings us to the other primary criticism of this shoe beyond the heel design of the shoe, and that is the price. This shoe comes in at $285 US. Now, that puts it in range of some of the top tier road super shoes, but there's no super foam in this. There's no super shoe technology in this. Instead, what you're getting and what you're, you're supporting when you buy this shoe is a small boutique brand that's very committed to trail running and very committed to building very durable products. So this is a product that may be considerably more expensive than, again, what I'm calling mass produced other trail shoes, but this shoe's gonna last you two to three times longer. So in the end, are you really spending more? Maybe the outlay in this shoe initially is more than you would spend in one of those mass produced shoes, but in the time that you would go through two or three of those mass produced shoes, you're probably only gonna be in one pair of this. So does the cost balance out? That's up to for you to decide. That's not for me to tell you. But I think the price is fair for what's here, given that it is a lot of interesting exotic materials made from a very small boutique company that is really focused on trail running. And by buying this shoe, you are supporting that small company who is very committed to trail running. So that's up to you to decide whether that's worth the price or not. How have I been using this shoe? Well, when I purchased this shoe, I purchased it as a bit of a hybrid shoe. I wanted a shoe I could use for trail running and hiking. Now, as a trail runner, this is the kind of shoe that I want to put on when I'm just going to go off, you know, and run in the trails. I sometimes will do group runs with a trail running group that I, I sometimes run with here in Taipei. And often we're on trails where, you know, I know the general conditions I'm going to run into, but I don't exactly know how much of a mix of, you know, technical terrain to flowy terrain to asphalt to, you know, all the stuff that you run into here in Taipei. And if I don't know what I'm going to get into, this is the shoe I want on my foot because it's going to handle everything. It's going to do the technical um, climbing because there's enough flexibility. There's a great grip in this shoe. 
but it's also going to you know descend really well because there's enough cushion back here there's enough protection it's actually got a fairly wide platform you know midfoot to the heel especially so i know i'm going to have a very stable ride pretty much everywhere and you know again even if this outsole fills with mud i know i'm going to have very good grip everywhere especially in muddier conditions where you know you need deeper lugs five mil lugs actually work really well there's sort of a nice middle ground um, for a lot of different conditions so this shoe for a trail runner here in taiwan works really well for the conditions that i would need it for but again i'm running primarily in the winter when it's cooler so when it's hotter we get our super hot 30 to 35 degree summer days that are very humid I don't know how much I'll be using this shoe when it comes to that. As a hiker, this is also a shoe that I, I really love, and I think it probably is a better hiker for me than a runner. As a trail runner, I like a little bit more minimal shoe that has a little bit more ground feel. Not that this shoe doesn't, I just like it a little bit more minimal than this shoe is. But as a hiker, I want a shoe that is this much shoe. Now, this shoe has a fairly wide toe box. I wouldn't call this a natural shape toe box. It's nothing like an ultra or a topo, but there's enough width here where your toes can splay and as your feet swell, if you're on your feet for 10, 12, 14 hours, there's plenty of room up here where you're not gonna get any constriction or anything. So as a hiker, when I'm going out in the morning and I know I'm gonna be back in the afternoon and I need a shoe just to kind of last me all day because I'm gonna be on my feet all day in the mountains, in dirt, on road probably on you know public transport a lot of different things this is really sort of the optimal shoe for that it's just the best mix of a lot of things so as a package i really like this shoe as sort of an all mountain shoe something i can really do everything in a mountain with and it's very comfortable for walking even on paved surfaces so it's been a good purchase i think it justifies the price i like supporting boutique companies so i don't have a problem with that but that's that's me you know, your your use case there is probably going to differ than mine. But overall, I've been very happy with this shoe, and I look forward to many, many more kilometers or miles in this shoe. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.